Well, good morning. It's great to see you here. Thank you for your uh, tolerance because we're doing things just a little bit differently. We tried to figure out how on earth are we going to change the entire room uh, and set everything up with about an hour between services because initially when we thought about Christmas in July, we're going to hold it on the other side of the village. It was going to be fine. And then we moved it here. And so... This is what we've come to. So welcome to Christmas in July Chapel and uh, to, to tables, chairs and Christmas decorations and so forth. And I, I hope you can make yourself comfortable and enjoy uh, chapel just a little bit differently just this once. Uh, it's great to see you here. I'd especially like to welcome the Reverend Matthew King, who's joined us from Anglican Aid. Uh, we went to Moore College together just one year. He was, he was ahead of me, so it's nice to see you again, Matthew, and, and catch up. And it's just wonderful that we can get together and celebrate uh, something important in a slightly different context and just hopefully be forced to think about it a little bit differently uh, as a result. But we begin not with any Christmas carols, not with any Christmas hymns, but actually a great uh, hymn, How Great Thou Art. If you feel comfortable, please stand, and if you prefer to remain seated, feel free.
Well, not everything we do gives God that glory, does it? Not everything that we do demonstrates how great God is. And so it's worth taking the time to just um, think about those things that we have done or said or thought which don't honour God. Let's take that time now, confess those things to God, and then we'll say this general prayer of confession together. Together. Heavenly Father, we praise you for adopting us as your children and making us heirs of eternal life. In your mercy, you have washed us from our sins and made us clean in your sight. Yet we still fail to love you as we should or serve you as we ought. Forgive us our sins and renew us by your grace that we may continue to grow as members of Christ, in whom alone is our salvation. Amen. And we're assured, having asked God for forgiveness, we are actually forgiven, because our Lord Jesus Christ was sanctified once for all to bear the sins of many. God therefore forgives those who look to his Son for mercy. Amen. Let me just invite up the Reverend Matthew King from Anglican Aid uh, to come up here. Good morning, everyone. Welcome. It's great to have you here. Thank you. Thanks for the invitation. Thank you to be here. It's great. Um, we were at college together. Yes. That's oh, this is a lifetime ago, wasn't it? it well, a, a little while ago, yes. I think so. It was something like 2006. Uh, seven. Don't do the maths. Okay. <laughs> Okay, too, too, too long ago. Do a bit late. And uh, puppet shows and so forth. And you've uh, you've been doing a few things uh, in between since then. Could just give people an idea of who you are, what's been happening, um, how you maybe how you became a Christian. Or sure. So um, since college, I've worked as a minister. I did six years at Bondi, and then uh, we went to Dural, and I did six years on staff at Dural Church. Uh, very different areas. Uh, but uh, and I finished up at Dural and uh, I've been now working with Anglican Aid and we still attend Dural Church. My kids are still involved there a lot and they've made some good friends in that area. Um, I'm married to Jo. Uh, she loves me dearly. I love her dearly. She must love me because now her name is Jo King. You've never done that joke before, have you? No. <laughs> My dad, when we were getting married, and dad worked that out. He was so excited. <laughs> and, and excited about the marriage as well. <laughs> um, we've got a whole family tree like that, but we won't, we'll go into that another time. Uh, we have three children, Charlotte, Jasper and Caleb. Uh, Charlotte and Jasper have left school. Charlotte's at university. Jasper is working for crew in their camp uh, facilities. And Caleb is in year nine. He goes back to school tomorrow after holidays. Tomorrow morning is going to be ugly. Uh, in my past, I've worked for uh, Shell Oil Company, and I've also worked for the Commonwealth Bank. So I realised that I've worked for a bank, an oil company, and the church. If it's a slow media day, you know they're the type of organisations that don't get good press. <laughs> that's that's where I've worked. And now you're working for Anglican Aid. Yes. What on earth is Anglican Aid? Thank you. Anglican Aid is the Overseas Aid Development and Ministry Support Agency for Sydney Anglican Churches. So we're uh, focused on overseas, and particularly focused on the poorest places of the world, and we're seeking to show God's grace and love to these people uh, overseas. Uh, we particularly focus on strengthening churches um, and transforming communities. Strengthening churches to uh, equip church leaders, uh, particularly where the church doesn't have many resources, so that they may strengthen the church, uh, lead the church faithfully. Uh, the Anglican church particularly, but the worldwide Christian church, is growing, particularly through parts of Africa, 
Uh, the church is booming. They need good, strong leaders. So we help strengthen the church, but we also help transform communities by equipping churches so that they can show the love of God to those around them. We do 140 projects in 40 countries at the moment, around about that. And there's some of the examples of the types of things that we do from health, education, uh, loving children, valuing women, water and hygiene, uh, community care and those sort of projects. It's quite wide ranging. There's a lot of stories to tell. We've got a short video now that we could, we'll watch just to give you an idea of what we do. My name is Reverend Dana Tessalonia. On this parish, we are the problem of water. The water is very dangerous. You know this place, there is no water. There is no water. There is no water. That's why we pass from outside to the us. We're going to hear a little bit more about Anglican Aid as Matthew comes and uh, talks with us today. And uh, with the uh, Christmas in July lunch, $5 from every ticket has, is being donated to Anglican Aid as well. But right now, we'll have our Bible reading, which the marvellous Pauline Blake is about to come and read for us. It's a couple of different readings which will appear uh, on the screen. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 12 to 15, and 1 John chapter 3, verses 16 to 18. Straight after that, all over to you, Matthew. Good 
Good morning, everyone. The reading from Corinthians. This service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. Because of the service by which you have proved yourselves, others will praise God for the obedience that accompanies your confession of the gospel of Christ and for your generosity in sharing with them and with everyone else. And in their prayers for you, their hearts will go out to you. Because of the surpassing grace God has given you, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. This is a reading from John. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. If anyone has material possessions and sees a brother or sister in need, but has no pity on them, how can the love of God be in, that, in them? How can the love of God be in that person? Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Pauline. Has someone ever done something for you that's left you speechless? Just totally flabbergasted at what they've done for you. About uh, 10 years ago, when we moved from Bondi to Dural, we moved out to Kenthurst. That's where the house uh, that we're going to be living in was. Kenthurst, very different to Bondi. Bondi, crowded, noisy. Kenthurst, spacious. Uh, a lot of people pretending to be farmers. It's a very nice sort of area but no public transport. And we only had one car at the time, but when we moved out, some friends of ours gave us a car. Just gave us a car. That's a wonderful gift, isn't it? I should point out that they had trouble getting rid of the car. Uh, even wreckers were nervous about taking it. So it wasn't quite a top quality car. They hadn't just driven it out of the showroom. But that car changed our family's life. I called it the green machine. I enjoyed driving it. My daughter learnt to drive on it and she was very thankful when we got a different car. <laughs> but that car, I said thank you to those people. But thank you just didn't cut it for how much that meant to us. At a time when we couldn't afford a car but we needed one, they came through. I bought them a box of chocolates. Now that, that tells you how important I thought it was. But that car was a gift beyond words. I, I couldn't stop thanking them. Has someone ever given you a gift that's left you speechless like that? Where you've said thank you, but, and you mean thank you, but it just doesn't cut it. You just mean thank you forever. It means that much. In that first passage, we read about an indescribable gift, a gift beyond words. Now these days, it seems that we're jumping from one crisis to another. Uh, cost of living crisis, war in Ukraine, drought, climate, other issues. There's always a crisis. But we're not the first people to face crises like this, are we? Throughout human history, there's always been a crisis. Uh, back in the first century, around when the New Testament was written, from about the mid-40s to early 60s AD, there were a whole bunch of events that happened that caused a famine to hit parts of the Roman Empire. In the year 45, the Rot Nile River flooded. Uh, there was a year or so later there was a big fight in the north part of Africa. 
drought hit uh, Syria, or what we call now Syria and the Middle East. And these were all significant growing areas for grain and other crops in the Roman Empire. So that through that 15 years or so, there was a lot of crisis. The cost of living crisis. In parts of Greece, what we call now Greece, the price of grain was eight times the price of what it was in Rome. Food was scarce. And that's on top of all the other normal hassles of life. So when this letter was written that we just read in uh, Corinthians, the letter to the Corinthians, in about uh, 55 AD, they'd already been living for 10 years or so with these famines. And in particular, the Christians in Jerusalem were doing it tough. Food was very scarce there. So Christians in Macedonia, Greece, they said, yes, we'll take our money, we'll give it to the share with those people, in, our brothers and sisters in Jerusalem. And they gave beyond what they were able to. They gave so that it was a burden to them. But in Corinth, it was tough as well. But the Christians in Corinth promised to give as well. And Paul wrote this letter in part to encourage them to go through and to fulfil what they had promised, that they would give to the Christians in Jerusalem. And in that first reading, we heard about the result of their giving, which would be a wonderful gift. It says, this service that you perform is not only supplying the needs of the Lord's people, those in Jerusalem, but is also overflowing in many expressions of thanks to God. What they were doing was a way of saying thanks to God. But this isn't the indescribable gift, as good as it was for the Corinthians to give to the Jeru Christians in Jerusalem. Paul says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. The motive for all this giving, for the, the Macedonians, the Corinthians, to give to the Jerusalem Christians, was God's gift to them. God's indescribable gift of what he has done for them and for us through Jesus. Earlier in the letter, Paul wrote about this, this gift. He said, For you know the grace of God and the, of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though Jesus was rich, yet for, you, yet for your sake he became poor, so that through his poverty you might become rich. One of the ways you know how much somebody loves you is by the things that they give to you. Their time, their attention and other sorts of gifts. Now I've got a background in statistics. I like to measure things. I'm very happy to measure everything. And I'd love to measure how much somebody loves me. And you can in a way, when you think about the types of things that they give you. The greater the cost of the gift and the more unworthy I am to receive it, the greater the love. This gift, this indescribable gift, is unique. The cost of our salvation was Jesus Christ himself. Jesus, who had all the riches of heaven, of that perpetual pleasure of life with the Father and the Spirit. And he gave up all of that to come to earth, to die on the cross in shame and under, his, under God's wrath. What a cost he bore when he took our sins upon himself. And what about our worthiness as recipients of this gift? Here we are described as poor. In other places of the Bible we are sinners, enemies of God, under his wrath. Could there ever be a greater cost 
for somebody most unworthy. What an indescribable gift. And the world is dying to hear about this love beyond words. So God has commissioned us, the church, to take these words of love beyond words to a world to make disciples of all nations. And in order to do this, we need strong churches, and strong churches need strong leaders. And this is why Anglican Aid is committed to the worldwide proclamation of Jesus by strengthening churches. We primarily do it through theological education, through helping build classrooms and dormitories and kitchens for where people study, to also supplying the cost of their study themselves and helping them go through their, their time. When you think about how much effort and resources have gone into training Paul, myself, here in Sydney, well, we want that for Christians and churches around the world. The need is immense. For example, in the three years 2019, 20 and 21, in the Diocese of Kilimanjaro in Tanzania, where there's a big hill, the bishop and his team of evangelists, they visited over 2,000 households, they baptised 3,500 people, and they planted 402 new churches in three years. Those 402 churches need strong leaders. In Madagascar, where we just saw that video, recently over a six month period, they had 40 new churches. In many places, instead of receiving money, the ministers don't get paid. They're only often given just a little bit of land to farm and they've got to grow their own food. But the ministers know what's important. Recently, one of them was speaking to one of our staff and he said this, We are called to teach the truth, to shine the light of Christ to those in darkness. We will go without, but this is what we are called to do as disciples of Christ. He knows the path before him is hard, but he is dedicated because he knows Jesus, who is faithful. And I know that here you've been uh, helping support some of this theological education around the world. One of the students is uh, the Reverend Innocent Dreyimana. I hadn't practiced that one. Uh, oh, I had a photo. Oh, no, sorry, I had a photo. I'm not sure where it is. That's all right. I'll come to it shortly. Uh, just recently, Innocent wrote to us with an update of the, his studies. Uh, he's been studying subjects like uh, Hebrew, systematic theology, church history. Do you remember these things? Vaguely back there. His highlight from last semester, he said, My study at East African Christian College has helped me understand better church ministry, as well as how to be a leader in the church by practising the courses we have learnt. Church history helped me to know how the church was organised in times past. My memory of church history is that the church wasn't always that well organised, but that's okay. Uh, he also did mention that he would like prayer for his family who are in distress at the moment. I'm not quite sure of why, but I'll pray for Innocent shortly. But friends, can I encourage, tell you, be encouraged. God's kingdom is growing around the world. In places in Af some places in Africa, the church is booming. God is faithful. He's drawing people into his kingdom. Now you, you probably know what it's like for someone to say uh, that they will do something for you, but then not carry through on it. I know I do that sometimes. I make a promise, but I can't do it. But the second reading that we read about is talking about is the encouragement to carry through on what we have promised to do. <coughs> love is about not just saying, I love you, but about faithfully, regularly, consistently 
putting somebody else's needs before your own. And that's what the second reading is all about. Verse, uh, it says, verse 18, Dear children, let us not love with words or speech, but with actions and in truth. Just saying the words is not enough. To love someone, it has to be done in action. And it's right, isn't it? Because that's how God has loved us, in action. So in response to the love beyond words that God has shown to us, We are to show love to others that's beyond merely words. And so I'd like to tell you about some of the things that Anglican Aid is doing to help the church around the world love their neighbour. And I'd like to tell you about Heading North. Heading North is an organisation of the church in northern Ethiopia. We've been partnering with Heading North since 2015. I'd like to tell you briefly about three projects that's been happening there. So here's a picture of uh, the Warrantilly Water Project in Ethiopia. Before the project, only 20% of people in that area had access to clean water. Access to clean water doesn't mean that they've got a tap in the next room. Access to clean water means they only have to walk one kilometre or less to get clean water. And only 20% of people had that access. After that project, the number of people that have access to clean water is 86%. A simple project making life-changing results. This is a picture of the Heading North um, compound, their headquarters in Ethiopia. That part of Ethiopia, pretty rough area, pretty dry at the best of times. It's also been ravaged by lots of tribal conflict and war over the years. So life for farmers is very hard. But Heading North introduced some new farming techniques. They introduced some new crops, a seedling project, irrigation techniques. And because of these uh, things that they've introduced, it now looks like that. That's their compound and that's typical of the area and the change that has been brought about. That's a good change, isn't it? You can see the difference it's made to that hillside. But then just a bit more recently, Heading North, Anglican Aid and the local government got together and bought a tractor. And now it looks like that. It's still the same place, that hill is there in the background. That's a good change, isn't it? Heading North is also uh, engaged in peace and reconciliation training in that area. Previously, vengeance killings were a big part of life for them. There used to be about 30 to 40 vengeance killings every year. That's terrible, isn't it? But peace and reconciliation training in the community groups there has meant that over the past three years, there's been only one killing. That's a big change, isn't it? I'd love to tell you more about Gasachu, how he was ostracised for reading his Bible, but now the young men in the village come to him and want to read the Bible with him. I would like to tell you about Ailu, who at the beginning of this year heard about Jesus for the first time, was shown tremendous love And he responded and gave his life to Jesus about a month before he died. I'd love to tell you more about Faru. He's he's in charge of heading north. And just this year he's been arrested without cause. He's been held in three of the worst prisons in Ethiopia. He's had a gun held against his head as they demanded the money from him. And he said, no. This is God's work and I don't fear death. I know where I'm going. And while in prison, he preaches Christ to the other prisoners. And we've heard stories of others coming to Christ because of Faru. I'd love to tell you more. There's 140 projects. This is just one of the areas we're working. We could be here all day, but we won't. But I'd love you to learn more about Anglican Aid. I've got a table set up over in the uh, cafe here. Uh, There's lots of different information uh, that you can uh, get there. 
Primarily, if you give us your email address, we can send you information, just part of our regular updates. You can do it with a QR code, or you can do it old school, pen and paper. I've got the material over there. And I'd just also like to tell you about this one. We really value people's prayers, particularly at times when, say, Faru is in prison and things like that. We've just produced this thing called Big Prayers for Little People. Big Prayers for Little People is 11 cards focused on the 11 different types of work that we do. And this is designed for big people, like us, parents and grandparents, to pray with their little people, children and grandchildren, about big things in this world, to help raise their eyes to see what God is doing around the world. I've got one of these here, but if you'd like a, 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 a um, pack of big prayers for little people, then over on my table I've got some little cards. Uh, that's a little reminder. If you can take one of these cards and it explains how you can hop onto our website and order one of these big prayers for little people. If you'd like to know more about those things, please come and see me afterwards. But friends, thank you for listening. Be encouraged. God's kingdom is growing. His love is being shown around the world. Uh, and God is doing wonderful things. Let me pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for your indescribable gift to us in Jesus Christ. Thank you for this tremendous love. Thank you, Father, that you are growing your worldwide church. And we pray for leaders that they may be equipped to lead your church. We pray particularly for Innocent. Uh, please help him to learn well. And please protect his family and help them, in this, particularly in this time of distress. Father, we thank you for heading north. Thank you for Faru and his faithful witness, uh, even under unimaginable pressures. Father, help us to give you the glory for this indescribable gift. Amen. Thank you. Thanks, man. There's a reason why people like Faru and the people of Heading North do what they do. It's because of who God is and what he's done. And we take the time each week to remind ourselves of that by saying the Apostles' Creed because it settles those issues in our hearts and in our minds. If you feel comfortable, please stand and we'll say the Apostles' Creed together. <coughs> I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, if you are comfortable, please remain standing and we'll sing our next song, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say.
Please be seated. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O God, our Creator, for you have brought to birth a universe of beauty and splendour. You have promised rest to the weary and relief to the heavy, heavy laden. You have promised that there is no place on earth beyond your presence and no voice lifted to you that you will not hear. Hear our prayers this day for the world and its people. We ask your blessing on the work of Anglican Aid as they reach out in very practical ways to bring the news of salvation and peace to our needy world. May they be supported both financially and in prayer to put their programs in place and to reach out with love and support to those in need. We pray for those places around the world experiencing drought and famine and pray that the nations will respond with food and other necessary support that all may live with dignity and hope. Soften the will, Lord, of Russia and President Putin that they will allow the export of food and grains from Ukraine to guarantee food security, especially for our poorer nations. And as we share lunch today, may we be grateful for the, the way that we are blessed, especially in this country. Look with compassion, Lord, on those people where war and conflict bring destruction and misery. We pray for an end to the war in Ukraine and to the conflicts and unrest in various places around the world, such as in Sudan and in Israel. Lord, we pray there may be peace and cooperation between nations, wise and honest governments, and a just and careful use of the Earth's resources. Grant us patience, Lord, and put a right heart within us that we will support what is good and just in the world and work toward maintaining the life and beauty of your creation. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we look to your worldwide church, we pray for all who exercise leadership, for those who spread the gospel message and those who minister in your name. We give thanks that Case and Cindy Bootsma are continuing to serve at the Beverly Hills Anglican Church. May their ladies' Christmas in July event be a time when the gospel is presented, especially to those who are not regular church members. And may the good news of the birth of our Saviour reach into the hearts of those present, bringing joy and peace. We give thanks that through Anglican Aid, we are able to continue supporting Reverend Innocent as he continues his studies at the East African College and Betty Muja at the Uganda Christian University. May they be diligent in their studies, equipping them to return to their ministry roles, leading, teaching and caring for your people. And we do pray for their families, Lord. We don't know what's happening in Reverend Innocent's family, but we do pray that they will know your support, your, your peace and your leading, perhaps in the absence of their loved ones. And we give thanks for those who care for us here in the village, for our management team, for Joe and Saskia, for Rhonda, for our great maintenance team, for Peter, Anna, Jonathan, and all our cafe staff. Keep them well and safe, Lord, especially during this winter season. And at St Phil's, we lift up their senior minister, Eric Churn, grant him wisdom and sensitivity as he leads, teaches, and encourages the St Phil's congregations. 
And may your hand, Lord, also be on Viv and the boys, Alexander and Aidan. Lord, as your church militant here on earth, help each one of us to be diligent in prayer and Bible study, to be sacrificial in time and money, and in the power of your spirit, show forth your love to this needy world. And Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gentle Shepherd, as we consider our families and friends, and those who live and work in this lovely village. We pray for relief, comfort and healing for all who suffer, whether in mind, body or spirit, who are sick or in pain, who are undergoing tests, special treatment and operation or recovery, who are weary, worn, or sad, and we name them before you now. We give thanks for those who've been able to return to us after a time in hospital. May they continue to regain their health, their mobility, and their well-being. And we give special thanks for those who care for others. Grant them patience understanding and strength. We remember those listed for prayer in our newsletter and all our residents in Goodhue Gardens and Bay Breeze, especially those who are new and still settling in. Gracious God, as Christmas is in our thoughts, we remember and give thanks for the wonderful gift of our Saviour Jesus, given to us in love, to bring peace to this needy world. Strength for today and bright hope for the future. We thank you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. And now would you like to join me in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just a, a few quick things before we finish off the, the service for today. Um, firstly, can I just say thank you to everyone who's helped put all of this together. There's quite a team of about a dozen or so people, plus the people who have just helped put the service together as well today. Uh, I thank you so much to everyone who has been involved in that. Thank you, Matthew, for coming out. Um, I know you're nice and close. Kent Hurst, is that right? Dural, dural, dural. So you know, it's it's just uh, somewhere in the Shire, isn't it? The the Hornsby Shire, is that right? Yeah, yeah. yeah the Hornsby Shire. So thank you for coming all the way out to, to join us today. Matthew's going to continue uh, to be here. He's going to present a little bit about Anglican Aid during our lunch, and as he said earlier, he's got a table out in the cafe. The reason it's in the cafe is that just for today, since the caterers are going to be out in the glass house. Uh, I moved morning tea just to the cafe and Fayez and her team are there to, to help us out there. And so Matthew's table is there as well. So if you want to find out more about Anglican Aid, about the other 139 projects that are, are happening, please come and see him at. He particularly likes being peppered with questions, so pepper him, pepper him away. Um, and uh, look, you'll see some big QR codes there, and if that's not your thing, don't worry about that. Uh, he'll sign you up. Uh, with pen and paper he, as well. He still knows what it is. So great, thank you for, for helping us out there. Um, morning tea is in the cafe. For those of you who are sticking around for lunch, we'll start back in here uh, at 12.30. So if you couldn't go out to the cafe, that will just allow us to straighten the chairs and make it look as nice as it did this morning. Uh, that would be uh, just um, outstanding. But otherwise, I'm gonna leave it there 
And uh, let's sing our final song reminding us of God's great faithfulness. Oh, Lindsay's reminded me one more thing. Bible study booklets. Bible studies are back. The booklets are in the cafe uh, along with the box if you'd like to donate anything for this week as well. Please stand as we sing our final song, Great Is Our Faithfulness. Thy faithfulness. Thank you for joining us this morning. Please join us for morning tea. Morning tea is for everyone uh, and it'll be a good chance to catch up with people. But just to finish, now to him who is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God our Saviour be glory, majesty, power and authority both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Thanks everyone.